Hey, my name is Gary Buchanan, and I'm the community manager here at BoxCast. And today, we're going to talk all about where audio gets sent. Come and join me. All right, so let's get started here. Um, this is a really hard topic to talk about most times because you're describing to somebody about where audio goes. And many people in the church world don't understand what aux sends or what matrix sends or submixes are or what a mix bus does or what a DCA is, right? So all of these words, all of these conglomerations and, you know, short-term moniker things, they all have specific meanings. But really today we're going to talk about how we get audio that comes into our console and how do we get it out somewhere? How do we send it? Okay. So a lot of times in the digital mixing world, this is done through a thing called routing. Um, here on my X32, again, I'm using an X32 um, sub uh, compact mixer here. This is a X32 um, compact, and I've got um, Logic Pro running a digital band. Uh, we call this virtual sound check, digital band into it, so we can kind of get a good w idea what it would sound like and how it would work, right? Obviously, here at BoxCast, we're all pretty talented people, but I couldn't get a full band in. Uh, let's learn a little bit more about where we're taking how all of this audio gets into our mixes. So. On a digital console, routing is the key tool that's used for sending audio to different places. And here on a routing tab, we can send audio or get audio in in different ways. We can submit audio and output or input, and we can take audio and pretty much send it to anything we want to send it to, whether that be to a monitor that's sitting in our nursery, or we want to send it to our live stream so our viewers at home can watch it. Um, online, especially if you're using some kind of like online platform like BoxCast. So with this, the console is going to do all the work. It's We're going to tell it where to go. If you look at an actual mixing console, such as an analog version, again, this is a Behringer Xenix 502, um, there are, there's a couple of different ways that this comes out. This particular mixer has main out left and right, and then it has a phones. Some of them have outputs here, like this would be a monitor or an aux send. Um, and you'll see that a bigger console will have more aux sends, and that's just the, the, the main term for what an auxiliary send is, okay? So hot tip here for you, auxiliary sends and mix buses, so auxiliaries are analog, mix buses are actual digital, they're the same thing, okay? So they don't mean anything different, it's just a new fancier term for helping you understand where it's all going to go. So we're going to use the digital console because, in my opinion, digital consoles make it a little bit easier to see, feel, and hear everything, and it'll be a little bit better for you. But in a digital world, um, we're going to send the auxes over. So let's take a look at what auxes are. Auxes here on the digital console on our X32 are labeled mix buses. So we have mix bus 1 through 8, mix bus 9 through 16. The X32 is a really good versatile tool. gives you 16 outputs with four of them being effects. So these four are our effects channels that are going to be piped out some some other way, whether it be a, a return or whatnot. But in this term, we have these actual 12 mix buses that we can send audio to directly, and then we can create custom mixes. This is called submixing, okay? Submixing is an important word for you to understand because this requires you to mix on a completely different level. All right, we have our main mixes. So if we were using our main outputs here, we're gonna send audio from here to our main mixes, okay? Main mixes would be anything that would be incorporating such as your main speakers, right? Or a main output, something where you're in a live environment and people can hear it. Here on the console, sub mixes would be sending to sub items. So our mix buses would be sending to say our live stream or perhaps our monitor that's on our stage. So our, our vocalists and our instrumentalists, our stage people can actually hear what they're playing. I will just tell you that personally, um, monitor mixes are great. And they work well if you have multiple monitors. If you had like five or six monitors that you're breaking everything up to, it's good to separate what audio goes where. So the best way to do that with a monitor is to subgroup all of those things. And the way that you would do that is by simply picking and choosing what mix goes to what monitor for those particular people. We used to do this a long time ago at my church. Uh, we moved to in-ear monitors instead, and they work way better to just reduce a lot of the actual stage noise. But in turn, we'd have all of our vocalists grouped together so they could hear themselves in one monitor. 
um, we would have our guitarist group together so they could hear whatever they needed to hear. And our drums would have one separate monitor. And then our keyboards would have one separate monitor. So we had upwards of four or five monitors on the stage. And if you can imagine, that's a lot of noise. But we would subgroup out all of the different mixes. So maybe our vocalists in their monitor mix, all they needed to hear was themselves in a keyboard just to stay on track where were the song's going. Maybe the drums needed to hear the keyboards and the vocals and the bass guitar just keep in rhythm. Maybe the bass guitar wanted just to hear drums and vocals and a little keys so they can get it. So you would create sub mixes in order for those particular monitors to get that mixture. And that's easily done here through a mix bus. And the same thing can happen when we're talking about a live stream going through a mix bus as well. So in an aux send environment, the difficulty with an analog console is that these are no longer digital, you can't see them. They're actually in rows across, <laughs> they say aux one. And it becomes a little tedious and a little difficult to get the right mixture, especially if you're trying to send it for a live stream. There's always a master control, but there's never the ability to mix it properly without some sort of additional hardware or software that's taking that in and you can see it. Here with a digital console, we can see it. So I'm gonna show you a little bit about how what a submix would look like, okay? And how we're gonna get it into our aux send or our mix bus for this example. So here on our X32 on our digital console, I've set up a monitor mix and a live stream mix, all right? And I want to go ahead and in our monitor mix, this is for our vocalists who just wanna hear themselves, some keyboard, and a little bit of drums to stay on beat. So what we're gonna do is in our mixing console, we're gonna hit the sends on fader. Basically what that means is that we're gonna change how we're mixing. So we're gonna hit sends on fader, and then we're gonna choose our monitor mix. And this has set us up to mix strictly on this mix bus. This is important, okay? If you don't hit the sends on fader button, you're actually mixing your mains. That's no bueno, okay? We wanna mix our monitor. So we hit sends on fader and we make sure that we're selecting our mix bus too. If you have like an Allen and Heath board, maybe a Personas board, um, um, maybe you're doing something like a minus um, 32, then this is all the same concept. You're still sending and doing a sends on fader. It's just labeled differently. All right. So our vocalist says they need to hear themselves, they need to hear drums, and they hear the keys. So let's go ahead and start sending some of that. So this is just like you would mix in a main. We're gonna adjust these faders in order to send it over here. I also wanna give you a hot tip about a lot of digital consoles. They are separated by input output. For example, here on our X32, anything in this realm is considered to be input and everything on this side is considered to be output. It's very easy. So we're sending signal in this way, it's coming into the console, and then we're sending it out this way so it goes out to wherever we need it to go. So we're gonna go ahead and send this vocal information to this output. So here's our background vocals and our regular vocal. So we're gonna go ahead and just move our virtual band ahead a little bit. And we're gonna go ahead and send our regular vocal in. And then we're gonna send our background vocal in. And you're not hearing anything yet and I'll tell you why. And we're gonna send our piano in and we're gonna to go to our sub level here and we're gonna send our keys in. Okay, so you're probably like, well, we don't hear anything, Gary. And that's why, because I have the main, the master volume for that mix bus down. And I did it on purpose. So we're gonna go ahead and turn this up and you'll start to hear it now. We'll set that at zero. We can tell that signal's coming in from this side, from the inputs into the outputs, because we can see here on our meter for that channel that that signal's going in. If we were to cut that, you would see that it starts to actually decrease. See how it goes off? It's no longer there. So we know that we're actually sending something into that mix, into this mix bus, into this aux send. And now we can say to the vocalist on the stage, hey, do you need a little bit of more of this? Do you need a little less of that? Or is it too hot in one area? And then they can tell us, hey, I'd like a little bit of more of this or a little less of that. So this is one way to send your audio into a monitor. This is also the same way that we're gonna send it into a live stream. So if we hit live stream, you won't hear this because we don't have it outputting to that through, through our recording stuff. But what you'll see is that you're gonna see this meteor jump. So we're gonna start sending audio into that. We're just gonna push a little bit of whatever into it. It's not gonna make any difference right now. But now we're mixing into our live stream. The important concept here is that with an aux send or a mix bus, in this case for the digital board, is that you're doing two separate mixes. You're doing a main mix, okay, which is what everybody will hear in their sanctuary or in the venue or in the room. And down here, we're doing a sub mix. We're mixing two different things. Now I will tell you that this is sometimes really, really difficult for volunteers um, because of the fact that they have to remember to always go to the sub mix by hitting sends on fader on an X32. But also it's really, really difficult because the concept of having to do a sub mix is really foreign. 
I have talked numerously with a bunch of friends here at BoxCast. I've been on phone calls with some users and clients and personal friends of mine who do mixing. And the concept of a submix is really foreign to volunteers. It's extremely difficult to understand because of the fact that you're trying to teach them you're using two mixes. It's, it's really hard because it is. It's two separate mixes. And in that regard, you have to kind of get the concept in the head that, hey, this is for the mains and this is for the monitors. Or, hey, this is for the mains, this is for the live stream. So within that, there's a kind of a, a little bit of a differential that occurs when it comes to mixing. A lot of times if you're sending it to like a live stream or a monitor, you're not going to get a direct feed. You're not going to be able to directly hear it. So you have to monitor it a different way. A lot of these consoles have outputs so you can listen to it through the headphones. Um, I have ours set up so I can listen to it through headphones, um, through in-ears. But a lot of times you're just going to have to check the live feed and see. Um, you get a really good visual with this, especially with aux sends and mixes. But with the sub mix, it can be a little foreign for volunteers. So helping them to understand that, hey, there's two mixes going, will kind of break that down and make it a little bit easier for you to be able to mix properly, especially if you're doing it for like a live stream. We all know how difficult that can be. So I want to talk to you a little bit more about another tool inside of the console that makes things a little bit better, and that's called a matrix send. This is my absolute number one favorite way to send out audio to say a live stream or to a nursery monitor or maybe even to a television that's mounted in the uh, in the youth room for for like a sub you know like an actual overflow room or something right. This is my number one way to do this. All right, so let's talk a little bit about matrixes and how those work. Um, no, this isn't like Neo in the Matrix. You know, doing that whole bullet time thing. Okay, this is not like that at all. But what this is is that this is an ability to send everything you're gonna send to your mains. So that would be the speakers in your room or speakers in your sanctuary or the, or the actual live mix that you're getting that people are hearing when they're physically at the location. We're gonna send that, we're gonna actually copy that and we're gonna send it to a matrix. All matrixes do is that they literally take whatever you put into them and they send it out, much like a mix bus, but there's no sub mixing involved. We're taking the exact copy of our mains and we're mixing them into our live stream and as a matrix. I love this method. I think it is probably the number one easiest way to get a mix that you hear in your room or in your house of worship in the space physically to be replicated inside of a like a live streaming environment. There are other ways to do this with a matrix, such as you send it out from here to say uh, Ableton or um, Logic. Um, and then you send logic and process that and it sends out to your live stream or sends out to your mains. This is, we're not going to talk about that today with this. With matrixes, you're using whatever's built into the console. So that's all the compressions, the dynamics, the effects, okay? Anything that would be controlling tone and you're sending that into the mains and then the mains are being copied into this matrix. And this is very easy to do. So a couple of caveats that I want you to be aware of so you understand. One, matrixes cannot be set up pre or post fader they are automatically post fader. What's that mean to you? It means that in order to be able to hear something, it has to be in your mains first. There is no sub mixing. Remember, matrices aren't giving us that sub mix. The second thing is, is that the volume level that is controlled outside of the master control for matrices is controlled from the mains. So whatever you put into the mains is how loud it's gonna be in the mains, is also how loud it'll be inside of the mix. So if there's a vocalist who's just a little too hot or a guitar that's maybe just a little too low, if it's low in the mains, it's gonna be low in the matrix. And there's no way to adjust that except for changing it inside of your mains. So let me show you how this works. So I've gone into our X32, I've gone to our routing tab, I've selected our output seven and eight, which is typically what X32s do. They make the last sets output seven and eight. And I've done seven and eight as our matrix one and our and eight here is our matrix two. That's the matrix left and matrix right. We'll always do stereo. Personally, mono is great if you just need to send a mono mix, but sending out a, a stereo mix is also good, especially if you're doing pans, which we'll get into sometime later in life. But here, we're sending out. You're also gonna be able to hear this mix just because that's how it works. It's gonna send it out because you're, we're gonna put it into the recording equipment. Now, within this, all we need to do is now begin to actually mix our vocals and our instruments. So if we're mixing live and in charge, we're adding in our vocalists, we're adding some background, a little effects, some electric guitars, a little percussion, some pianos and keys. We're gonna add our bass, pull in our drums, get our loop in, 
And then these two here are guide and click. This is for our people on the stage. We're not going to worry about that. And now we have a mix going in. This is our main mix. This is what we're mixing into our main system. So now in order to put it into our matrix, it's already being sent. It's already being copied. Now we're just going to turn up the mains here or the matrixes here. And now you should start to hear it in that level. So typically I like to go to zero. And that's the mix. If I were to adjust the mains level, if I were to take something out of there, let's say I went ahead and took all of our vocalists out, I've adjusted the mains, all the vocals are out of the mains, they're also out of your live stream, they're out of that matrix. And that's intentional, okay? The reason for that is because we have to make an understanding here that you are sending things to the mains first and the mains are being copied into the matrix. Again, this is my number one favorite way to do this because of the simple fact that it actually removes all the unnecessary learnings of submixing. So you can train your volunteers to just worry about the main mix. And I'll actually show you how to do that in a later video. But you can train your volunteers how to main mix, how to get the right bass and the right structure set up so your audio mix sounds good in your live stream, sounds good in your monitors, sounds good wherever you send it. I want to thank you for joining me today and, and learning on what aux sends are and how, they're, how they can help simplify your mixing. And if you have any questions, please put them in the comments below. We're happy to answer them. Thanks for watching.